Welcome to the Scariest Things Podcast, your gateway to the trends and tropes of the horror genre. This is Mike Campbell, and I am joined, as always, by Eric Lee and Liz Williams. And tonight we are talking possibly the most non-horror of all horror (laughs) subgenres, UFOs. Yeah. Unidentified flying objects. Yep. Uh, and, and and this is uh, this is episode one thirty six. One thirty six. Yes, yes, this is episode one thirty six. So we uh, we have now. Yeah. So we're 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 taking our second lap around at this point. Second lap around. We're, well, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 UFO thing because we oh yes. we did we did one called abductions and so we did abductions and we did science mm-hmm. fiction horror but and and both of those kind of touched on generally speaking yep. UFOs and we did not, cryptids and we did cryptids which are not UFOs and Mike insisted that we do UFOs yes which which, <laughs> which I now just in, assume all my aliens came in UFOs so yes. you're not going to yes. see yes. any UFOs all of mine have flying saucers. In retrospect, oh, I'm not okay. sure why I suggested why we do UFOs because <laughs> it is, you know, a couple episodes ago when we were when we were talking about folk horror and I I came to the conclusion that every single folk horror film needed to be remade because they were the, they were so mm-hmm. good and there was so much there. Uh, my my the conclusion I came to after watching uh, many many a UFO film was no one has quite made the perfect UFO film. The, oh, per- the, the perfect UFO horror film. Yes. I think the perfect mm-hmm. UFO film has been made in the context of Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters. Close Encounters. Close Encounters. That film yeah. is 100% br- brilliant. And it does include, I think early on in the film, a couple horror elements. It, it's scary. When, like, yeah. when you're a kid and you're watching the abduction of the little boy. Yeah. That is that that's I remember watching that and going, No, don't, no, yeah. don't go out that door. Yes. <laughs> right. And uh yeah, and that and it stuck with me. And and Richard Dreyfus's madness and mashed potatoes. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. but it is not a horror movie. No, no. I did get no. I did a couple years ago get a chance to stay at the KOA right at the foot of Devil's Tower and watch Close Encounters on an outdoor cool. screen with Devil's Tower in the background. That's so cool. Nice. And my nice. six-year-old at the time spent the bulk of the film parked under my armpit because he was terrified oh. of yeah. the film. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah, the, um, I think you know this. It is a uh, a type uh, or a genre that actually it's it's got a long track record mm. uh, you, mm-hmm. going back to the 1950s, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the, the and you know, I think a lot of that fear of communism and the emerging belief that the advent of rocket technology, that space was closer than ever. Right. Right. And that the thought that we were prepared to enter the space race and that other life forms may may have been or are or are existing on the planet. Right. Right now. And it really popped with the imagination mm-hmm. of Americans. It's almost un- that, that, that it's like you don't see European UFO abduction movies. These are. This no, is a uh-uh. this is an American trope by and large. And, oh my uh, gosh, yeah. You know, I think you you look no further than Area Fifty One. And what was the, there was a rush there was a Russian UFO film la, from last year. Sputnik. Uh, Sputnik. Sputnik. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Did you either of you see that one? Uh, uh, well, I watched that, it. I, yeah, I think um, it's pretty good. Because it was one of Robert's top. Yeah, of correct. The year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty good. Yeah. It was pretty okay, good. Okay, okay. Yeah, but it's less about that one is a a uh, a, a Russian. Uh, ship returning back to earth and not yeah. you know, the classic you know aliens are watching us and i mean really i mean the, when i'm when i think about the ufo stuff i think about the little green men or the gray men right sort right. of who who have been uh preparing for an invasion of this planet or scouting yep. us out right uh, if it's yep. not a horror movie but there's it's kind of funny because we've, we've gone through these cycles right so the 50s there was the red scare kind of ufo stuff right right uh mm-hmm. and in the 80s you had stuff like uh, Cocoon and E.T., the extraterrestrial, right. Right. Starman, right. and Close Encounters, which was uh, at, 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 at worst benign and benevolent. Like they're our best. friends. Yeah, it's like 
It's, it's, aliens it's, are not our friends in it's any the, of my uh, it's, the, it's the zombie dichotomy. Do you want a fast zombie or a slow zombie? Do you want a hostile right. alien or do you want a friendly alien? Yeah. Although right. I, think, I think things really changed. Like, what was it, uh, 89 when the, when, when the guy came out, uh, what is it, um, Lazar? What was the guy's name? Is, was it Lazar? Yeah, um, yeah. Bob, Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar. Who, right. The, the 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 guy who who said he was an Area Fifty One guy and it's like right, we've, right, been, right. we've been studying spaceships and aliens and it's like no he's full of shit but right right, yeah, right, right. but but at the time it was like oh my god it's real <laughs> right right <laughs> <laughs> so you know and that and that but that really that kicked in the tourism industry right in, oh in, in absolutely Nevada. I mean mm-hmm. we well and e- even here in Portland or well just outside of Portland in McMinnville we have. Uh, we have a very, very famous, uh, they have a UFO festival mm-hmm. in McMinnville every fall, I think it is. Mm-hmm. And it's part of, there. it's That's part of everybody's drunk. Right. <laughs> right. It's in the wine country. But it is, yep. uh, it is. There's a UFO. It, yeah. It was a UFO sighting from the 1950s, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And that was, that tipped off the whole thing. And there's even a hotel, which, uh, has an entire UFO theme it's around It's a really it. nice hotel. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, have either of you been to Roswell, New Mexico? No. no. Oh, see, I went out of my way on a road trip one time. I drove through White Sands. I went to Roswell. I went to the Roswell crash site. I went to the Roswell UFO Museum, which is right in downtown Roswell. And there actually is a UFO museum, which is hokey as hell. Right. Uh, but my, my takeaway there from my time in New Mexico was that when you're driving across the White Sands... I uh, can't remember if it's a national park or a national monument, but when you're driving across White Sands, it is so barren and so desolate and so eerie and so weird. I'm not surprised that people had actually seen UFOs. Well, hmm. you know, and of course, the the government explanation <laughs> is that these it's are... It's all weather balloons. Yeah, weather balloons <laughs> and test aircraft. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, and, and Area 51 is still used uh, for... Test aircraft. That's and right. Balloons. That's right. That's what they say. That's right. That's right. So I guess the real question is, uh, and I asked, I asked you guys the same question when we were doing cryptids. Uh, have you ever encountered a UFO, and do you believe in UFOs, Eric? No, no. Oh, okay. Liz. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yes. No, no. You were abducted. No, no, no. You were abducted, and you. Yeah. I was abducted. Uh, they they sent me back. I got an anal probe, but it wasn't from <laughs> yeah, an alien. I got the anal probe. They sent me back. <laughs> like, yeah. That was, a, that was a neighbor thing. I think. I don't know. Um, the. the, the, the I, I uh, I wondered how long it would take us to make it through before we did anal probe. <laughs> Not long. You kind of have to do. You have to go with the anal probe. You have thing. to throw a little <laughs> anal probe out with the aliens. Yeah. What? No, because that was not a thing in the, the in the fifties. You never. They never said. Yeah. Some the alien stick stuck something up my butt. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but we we will talk about sticking uh, something uh, in one of the films. Uh, it, but it's not the butt. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's, that oh, I, I am intrigued. <laughs> it's like, where are you sticking that probe? I'm glad I'm home alone yes. and not with you guys. <laughs> Mike's gonna do a demonstration here for us. No. I'll go. I'll go get a spoon. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, good times with oh, UFOs, goodness. and that's but that's where the horror is, folks. It's the anal, anal probe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, potentially. Potentially. I, um, do you want a Do you want a proctology exam? Yeah, not so much. <laughs> right, I think not uh, so much. I'm gonna pass. Uh, Thanks though. <laughs> big old ropey enema. Mm, <laughs> pass. <Thanks>. So <laughs> we have gone off course. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of lot, of, the, the, but you can't in in this day and age. You can't. What What popularized the whole notion of the anal probe? I mean, because there's South there, Park. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah prob- <laughs> prob- <laughs> <Garden>. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. So you get South Park, Ooh, you got X Files. Right. Um, yeah. And you know, the, there have been, you know, the, the the talk of, you know, cattle mutilation. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a favorite one. And that actually dates back to like the the fifties. I you know, I, I, I did uh, in preparation for this, I think we, we talked a little bit about this, is I did some uh binging of fifties um movies. Uh, right. Like Invasion of the Saucer People. Right, right, right. Where they had they actually had on Farmer Dennis's pasture, and there's a cow. It's like, are they going to kill the cow? No, they didn't kill the cow, but it was like, ah, it was an opportunity. Right. Um, <laughs> but the, you know, the uh, day the Earth stood still, not yep. of this Earth, War of the Worlds. 
uh, this island Earth. Um, they conquered Earth it, versus it, the flying saucers. It doesn't get more explicit than that. And conquered the world. They conquered the world. That's yeah, my that's, favorite. That's yeah, that's the ice cream cone. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, monster. Roger Corman special. Um, there, none of them particularly strong movies. War of the Worlds was pretty good. Yeah, but but you you kind of touched on this earlier. Where we were talking about the the threat of communism in the 1950s. But where where do you think the scares really come from with uh, with UFOs? I mean, do you, do you, do you think it? Do you think it's more like, because because I know it's you know there's there's like there's multiple things happening. Obviously, one is sort of like it's the harbinger for the end of the world. Mm-hmm. The other is a much more personal thing, which is like a home invasion slash abduction. Mm-hmm. Uh, but where do you think the scares yeah. come Liz, from? What's your take? Well. That's interesting. One of my films was going to touch on both of those things, but probably okay. for me, I would go with the home invasion abduction part because I'd be too worried about that to think about that the world was actually ending. Right. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a little bleak. It's like, is it a personal <laughs> thing where they're coming to your house or is it like right. independence day where we are all they're gonna banning destroy together the to right. fight the aliens? Yeah. Yeah. And there, there's so I many. Think, yeah. And I think, I think too. that's where the fear comes to is, is sort of that, that, that like the, the idea that you're going to have to go one-on-one, uh, you know, uh, right, in, with in, an alien. in hand-to-hand combat with some space alien right? and not a nice space alien, not ET. No, <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, uh, um, I think I think one of the 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 you know the red scare you know where where the the UFO aliens really are you know the are sinister right. I think was best done uh in in that era which was um invasion of the body snatchers Oh yeah yeah for right? sure mm-hmm. you know for and sure. that because that that was the full on paranoia Right um and it's uh you know that and that 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 dread that, that was that, that became a permanent staple of, of of this genre. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for sure, it, for sure. You know, gr- granted, I think there have been some other good creepy aliens, but the little gray men and the little green men—they're kind of silly. I mean, right. in a way, I mean, right, they're not—they're right, right. not—they're not threatening in the same way. Although that they have the power to beam you up, right? And then you know, poke and they potentially in. have telekinetic powers too. Yeah. Oh well, because that, that was there's <laughs> always that. That was a you know. Um, Harkening back to our abduction episode, um, yeah, I had oh god, and I'm going to kill myself here. But what the <laughs> that the the there was an abduction one where they they turned the tried to turn the tables on and they captured an alien. And oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, yeah. We, want our, we want our buddy back and right it, and altered they, and the, yeah altered and yeah they, and it failed and right. they all, and that was that was a good scary yeah yeah, uh, yeah. UFO abduction one. I'm not going there again because it's like yeah you know, it's like one more it, around but the track. Does, I don't need to. But it does beg the question: if they have telekinetic powers, then why do they need to do the anal probe? Mm. That's because they're mean. They just like it. That's right. They're, they're, you know, <laughs> they get off on it. I right. don't know. That's, they just uh, like it. You. All right. So, last question before we jump into this: uh, Do you think that there are alien life forms, intelligent alien life forms, on other planets? Yes. All right. I like it. I do. All right. Is that? Are you just channeling your inner Carl Sagan? I, I just think. <laughs> I just think that. That, that the universe is so big and that the probabilities of, you know, you know, how many stars, how many planets, how many habitable planets. Right. And then, you how know, many, the, how many, gold, how many Goldilocks planets. Yeah. yeah What's that quote? Like either we're alone or we're not. And either of those is equally terrifying. Yes. Right. right. So, <laughs> yeah. Good point, Liz. Yeah. Cause it, well, it would suck if we're the only planet because we, right. we got to find we're, that... we're stuck on this planet with Ted Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and, and that's it. And there's oh, nothing no. else. <laughs> what? <laughs> Please tell me there's more. There's got to be more. The aliens heard Cat Scratch Fever and said, nope. <laughs> you can have it. Yeah, I think, didn't they put Cat Scratch Fever on the Voyager probe that was got sent out there to, to, to play my show? <laughs> Did they really? No. It was, okay. if that, I, that would be enough to antagonize an alien that, and get an anal probe. That, that's a threat. Yeah. That's what that, that is. That is a threat. I, I, I think. Ted I, Nugent, you're getting the anal probe. I, I believe that they have, uh, I think. I think across the universe, yeah, is was was the pop song that oh. they chose to to be on the Voyager. Okay, Pro. okay, you know the the old John Lennon. Okay, song. right, 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 right. Yeah. Um, so all right, be- all right. Well, let's get into this. Let's do it. Okay. Let's start it. 
Who's going first? I'll go oh. first. Okay. I'm going to start with a film uh, that neither of you have heard or seen. This is a 1975 film. And when we started into this UFO thing, or when I agreed to do this, I thought, oh, my God, I don't know a, I don't know a lick about UFOs save for what uh, Mr. Leonard Nimoy taught me in the context of <laughs> In Search Of. I really don't know much about UFOs. And so I consulted friend of the podcast, Matt Howell, and said, because he is he has read a ton about UFOs. Okay. He is he is very interested in this. And I said, what do you know about UFOs? And he said, are you familiar with uh, Betty and Barney Hill? And I was like, I don't know what that is. It's apparently one of the most famous cases of all time. Uh, it happened in the early 1960s. It was an alien abduction. Mm -hmm. uh, but this film is The UFO Incident, and this is a 1975 uh, made-for-TV movie. It's an American made-for-TV movie starring James Earl Jones. Yes. Oh. That Darth Vader. Wow. And Estelle Parsons, mother of uh, – she was in a million – uh, Alan Parsons. A, no, she was in a, she was in a million <laughs> TV shows, but she was, of course, most famous as Roseanne's mother on the Roseanne Barr show. Oh. Uh, and oh, then man. it, of course, uh, features uh, Bernard Hughes, who was Mr. Merlin, for those of you of a certain age, and <laughs> and Doc Hollywood. Uh, and he was also for Liz. He was the grandfather, the grandpa in the Lost Boys. So oh, hey, let's one for Liz. <laughs> yeah, and basically that's the that's the entire cast of the film. But it really it follows this very very famous and really uh, it's it's become known as the um, the uh, the Hill abduction or the Zeta uh, retic retic Reticuli, 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 reti yeah, reti reticuli. Sorry for butchering that. Reticuli. Uh, yes, the Zeta reticuli. Uh, uh, yeah, the <laughs> We're gonna call it. We're gonna call it the Zeta incident. Okay. We're gonna call it the Zeta incident. We're gonna shorthand it. Uh, but uh, it was. Um, it involved a a couple, uh, Benny and Barty Hill, played by again. Uh, James Earl Jones and Estelle Parsons, and they're two very ordinary people that were on the on the road one night, and they had this extraordinary experience. Uh, they were an interracial couple, which was kind of interesting because you know in the early 1960s, and they really were an interracial couple. And of course, we know mm -hmm. that, that both yeah. those act those uh, those actors are interracial, but right. they uh, they had this traumatic experience. And then they essentially had no memory of it, but then stuff started to seep back into their consciousness. And so they consulted, they ended up consulting a, um, a psychiatrist um, who tried to piece it all apart. And he used, uh, he Hypnotism used, or something like that? yeah, he used hypnosis um, and he, uh, to, to, to try to figure it all out and he 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 basically concluded allegedly that he couldn't quite figure out if it was a case of he said he said that it's either it happened uh, <laughs> it either she made it all up and influenced him right or it really is a case of double amnesia which he said is almost impossible and it can't right. really you can't have double amnesia um but um, the film is really fascinating because basically it's it's essentially a play. Uh, it's okay. it starts with a sort of a, a, re, a dramatization of them encountering the aliens, and they do show the aliens, mm -hmm. and then it's a very very long series of um, psychological evaluations of Benny Hill, Betty Hill, and then Barney Hill. And so it's just a lot of conversation between them, but it's incredible because you have some of the greatest actors ever in mm -hmm. James Earl Jones and and certainly Estelle Parsons, and them explaining in a really wild and believable way mm -hmm. that they were indeed taken so, onto a UFO. So do they? Is it is it a? Does it feel like a documentary? Does it? Is it, or does it feel like a narrative drama? Um. It. More the the latter, really, more mm. more more of a, a narrative drama, but it it really it really comes off like a play, frankly. Mm. Um, the, a couple of the interesting things about the the film is that um, the film apparent, apparently aired a couple weeks after the Travis Walton UFO incident, uh, which of course was turned into, and you guys may be talking about this. Uh, 
Oh, uh, uh, fire, not fire on the the sky, fire in the sky. Yeah. Yeah. That was the Travis Walton incident. And the, uh, the, the cognitive, uh, psychologist, Susan Clancy, that was, I guess, evaluating Travis Walton concluded that he was actually influenced by this made for TV film, which was influenced by, you know, which, which was originally a book which was originally an actual tale of these 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 uh, this this interracial couple but the other really really fascinating thing about the and they they talk a little bit about this in the film is that she under hypnosis drew a map because mm-hmm. because the aliens were trying to figure out or she was trying to figure out where the aliens were from and that she had asked the aliens to to draw her a map and they were like, well, we can't really help you contextualize this because you don't have any understanding of time and space and all this other mm-hmm. stuff. And so they kind of drew out this map for her, which she then drew. And a lot of researchers at the time said, oh my God, this is a perfect adaptation of the Zeta star system. I, hmm. I just all of a sudden, as soon as you said, you started describing this, I realized a movie that I totally forgot that that could have been oh. on this list, but it's <clears throat> it's very much science fiction, not horror. But sure, this sounds like the. I mean, I, I think of the arrival about oh sure yeah about yeah, how yeah. you communicate with the aliens, which was right. uh, uh, Denis Villeneuve, and it's like uh, a mind blowing. I think it's one of the great extraterrestrial movies, right? Uh, because it also doesn't it's like not little. It's, it's they're space squids, right? Right, right, right. right. But at the same time, like, how do you communicate with these things? And that's why I think a lot of the, the you talk about the telekinetic or right uh, not. The, the telekinesis, yeah. Well, there's mm-hmm. telekinesis, and then there's also telepathy. Oh, sure, yeah, right? yeah. And so the, this is the telepathic stuff. Yeah, 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 of yeah. We are commuting through our huge, communicating through our huge brains. Right, like, right, right. Look at our giant skulls. You right, know, that right, 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 right. Uh, and it's like we know that they must have made it all the way from Beetlejuice because they got these big heads, and that means they're super smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the the probe I was talking about, they do probe Betty, and they probe her through her belly button. Oh, okay. yeah. ow. Which is like, <laughs> yeah. gotta hurt. I mean, I, th- yeah, that's a sensitive spot. <laughs> that's a sensitive spot, yes. Probably worse than the. Because there's not a no, there's, the there's, there's a sealed opening there. Yes, it's there is a, a, it's like, it, yeah. the, at least at least the anal probe. At least there there's some resistance there. So yeah, I do, I do, I do highly, highly recommend the UFO incident. It's a really fascinating movie. I'm, I'm amazed it was a made-for-TV movie because it's, it's really well done and it's the acting is absolutely incredible. Yeah. You can, it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of a work to find a copy. Like if you want to find a physical copy, you probably can't find a physical copy and you can't stream it, but you can watch it off of YouTube. There you go. There's a really, really yeah. decent copy on YouTube that you can watch and. It was perfectly reasonable yeah. to to take in this film. YouTube is the place where you go to find the public domain stuff that has yep. been completely forgotten. Right. That's where I found Shriek of the Mutilated, right? Right. It's like, right. right. You can't find it anywhere else but this kind of dodgy movie. <laughs> right. You can get it on YouTube. <laughs> so, yes, uh, go check out uh, The UFO Incident. Excellent. All right. Yes. So, uh, we're going to, going to I'll, Eric. I'll, I'll take the next one. Yes. So, this is. Um, this is a movie that I just saw, or reasonably recently. Um, mm-hmm. It uh, this is Cosmic Dawn from the just uh, it's it will be dropping in uh, streaming uh, er, in first quarter of next year. So uh, uh, be aware of it. Uh, this is directed by uh, a gentleman named Jefferson Maneo. This is his second feature. Uh, he had previously done a western, um, and it stars uh, Camille Rowe, Emmanuel. Chikri and Antonia Zegers. Not exactly household names, but I would not be surprised to see Camille Rowe in the future because she's beautiful and she can act. Um, Where did you catch this? This this I saw at uh, this was nice. this was Nightstream. Okay. Okay. This was my this was my one decent pull from Nightstream. So this is we're doing we're doing all UFO movies you cannot see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the movie opens with a woman named Caroline and her young daughter who uh, in, they're in the woods peering through a telescope through the night sky uh, when a shimmer of shifting colors and light motes envelops them and Caroline is enthralled and she's she looks like look honey isn't it beautiful and then she's taken up in a flash of light leaving her young daughter Aurora behind. And uh, you, you see an alien claw go out there and sort of tap Aurora on the head as they depart. Okay. Um, 
fast forward 11 years and Aurora has grown up into a beautiful but highly troubled young woman. And this is uh, Camille Rowe. And uh, she has str- been struggling uh, with her mother's abduction. She's now living with her aunt and she's seeking answers for the abduction, but she's sort of gone into this self-destructive spiral of drugs and partying and, um, and, and in, in an attempt to try and get answers, she stumbles across or rather it seems to be drawn to a bookstore where she befriends another young woman, Natalie, who turns her to an author who says has all the answers and she, th- this woman, Elise, wrote a text called Cosmic Dawn. Okay. And yes, mm-hmm. this is a book that is tied to a UFO cult. Oh, and okay. it I is, like it. It is the full-on hippy-dippy cult with brightly colored matching outfits, uh, the active promotion of hallucinogens, a communal attitude, some sycophantic oddball enforcers, uh, and populated by those who believe they've either seen a UFO been abducted by a UFO or are really, really, they really, really want to be abducted. Like and the the Nike shoe cult. Yes, what was the What yeah, was the Nike uh, shoe cult called? Uh, the San Heaven's Diego Gate. folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what was it, Liz? I think it was Heaven's Gate. Yes, yes, the, the, the Heaven's Gate, Gate yeah. cult. Yes, this is it very sounds much like the Heaven's Gate. Cult. It also feels like the Rajneeshis. Right? Oh yeah, they're because crazy. they have like they have a couple of armed guards and you know the the bright colors and the kind of the, the guru self help talk and. Uh, you know, like any worthy cult, the Cosmic Dawn has some serious fractures inside of it. Uh, there are a couple of non-believers who are in the cult because their spouses are true believers. Uh, and, and it does not help that, you know, they're under watch by armed, <laughs> armed guards, uh, who nominally are there to pretend, pre- pre- prevent, uh, nosy interlopers from, from checking it out. Uh, it, and in this way, it really feels like Rajneesh Puram in, in <laughs> Quebec, right? Um, Rajneesh Puram in Quebec with yeah. space aliens. And so it's right. it's not so much a horror movie about the UFOs and the aliens themselves, but much sure. more about the cult. So right, 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 right. In a way, it resembles uh, the Thai West movie, um, oh, Sacrament. The Sacrament. Yep. yep, yep. Ah, um, okay. And in in which you the the cult leader has a sway over all of her charges and she's, you know, she's willing to, uh, you know, either drug or capture or, you know, do, do whatever she can to, it's like, once you're under her influence, you ain't allowed to leave. Uh, and so you, but you do get a flash forward and you realize that Aurora has managed to break free of the cult and, and, and it sort of goes back and forth between her time in the cult and her plans to come to to go back and either rescue those who she still cares about, right, or take take out take out the cult leader, right, right, right. Um, it's a it's a slow burner, but it really stays with you. It's a beautiful movie, and also it's it's got this great psychedelic soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's cool. a uh, I don't know if you remember a band called Clatu. Yeah. Yeah, from the early seventies. Occupants <laughs> of interstellar craft, um, and they, they say and it's, about a, it's a total earworm. Right? Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. Gets, you listen to it, and it stays with. And afterwards, you're just sitting there humming it. It's like, oh, they got me. Um, <laughs> Eric's uh, part of the cult. I am indoctrinated, and uh, and the rest of the soundtrack is done by uh, sort of a newer generation of hippie dippies, uh, yeah. MGMT, sure, who did Kids. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I like yeah. them. Um, and uh, so they did. They 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 got this just pulsing, cool soundtrack uh, going through, and it really fits sort of the context of these weird, right? These hippie UFO true believers, and uh, so the ending. Do you get to actually see the space aliens at some point, uh, or is that a spoiler? That's a. That, I think. I think the. Yeah, it would be a spoiler. But okay. stick around for the end because okay. that that is okay. that really is when it comes down to it. Uh, the climax is about. Camille returning and trying to exact you know, revenge, but the cult's still going. But we're on. We've got an appointment, right? And so, what's going to happen? Who who who's going to win this situation? Is the is is she just going to going to go to town and take everybody out, or is there going to be an alien spacecraft waiting for them? And that's and that becomes that's that's the destination point to the end of this movie. Really cool. Um, Funky, uh, quasi horror. Again, it's hard with UFO to get yeah. 
to get the out and out scary, scary, but sure, cult sure. is scary. Yeah. In 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 a weird way, it's it's it, it gets under your skin a little bit. Mm-hmm. Particularly, you get these glassy eyed people who just like there's they're 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 totally buying in, and you go, oh, it's just kind of if you know. A, 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 I would highly also recommend the documentary about the Rajneesh Puram yes. thing about how people yeah, how people can can fall under the sway of yep. of um, a a leader with. Guns and money. Yep. yep. Indeed. Indeed. All right, Liz. Okay. I'm going to start with a gateway film that's firmly planted in horror or not. Not a lot of people like this film, but I love it. And it is 2002's Signs by M. There Night you go. Shyamalan. Good call. Um, I love this I watched. Uh, I watched is... it last night. All right. Did so you? I'm, okay. I'm ready to quote directly from it if you need me to. <laughs> Remember back in the day when Mel Gibson was just like a handsome guy and not a crazy anti-Semite. <laughs> oh, the good old days. Too. Um, okay. So this is written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Stars Mel Gibson, Joaquin Phoenix, Abigail Breslin, and Rory Culkin. Um, as a family that, of course, live in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, as all of Shyamalan's movies are set in and around Philadelphia. And they're the Hesses. And Mel Gibson plays Graham. He was an Episcopal pastor whose wife passed away about six months ago from a drunk driving accident where M. Night Shyamalan plays the drunk driver. These guys live on a farm and... Uh, all of a sudden, in their cornfield, because nothing good ever happens there, they discover crop circles. So, you're following this family as we're getting news reports and weird things are happening that aliens are invading Earth, all over Earth. So, in pure Shyamalan form, <laughs> the dialogue is not great, but it's full of little signs that you're going to pick up little characteristics about every person that in the end will help fight the aliens. So this was kind of the one that I was thinking when you said, is it more the home invasion versus the, you know, world's going to end? Cause that's a whole conversation. Cause Mel Gibson right. of course has lost his faith and his brother, Merrill played by Joaquin Phoenix wants to be comforted. Right. You know, so it's really be one of those there are no atheists in the foxhole kind of things yep you know but he's just trying to defend his family and it, it's a good fun film it's got your aliens you get yep. some pretty good creature effects you get uh i don't know all the Shyamalan twists shame. and turns yeah. and I, I love this movie. I don't know why I like this one so much. Um, I know. Well, you know, Eric told me. Uh, he said I think Liz is going to pick Signs, and I was like, "Well, ah, I said, well, I've I never, se- I've never seen Signs, so I better." Really? I, I said, "I want to watch it." Yeah. And Eric said, "Well, just wait. There's a twist at the end that's not very good." Yeah, that's not very good. But I'm going to disagree. I liked, <laughs> I liked the twist. Okay. I thought, I thought it was very good. As okay. The, as the parent of a, uh, you know, roughly uh, a child that roughly the same age as Rory Culkin. That's yeah. true. I was like, yeah, I, I, I get that. I, I liked okay. it. Well, okay. it's just kind of the way it was a little obnoxious, it but <laughs> it's the, it's the, um, kind of choppy dialogue yeah. to make sure you are listening to these pieces, and then that that's how it's going to fold in. Yeah. He's, not a master at that, but right. it, yeah. I, I love this movie. I yeah. think it's a family movie that anybody could watch. It's definitely a gateway, but it does have some scary stuff. Oh, I yeah, love for sure. seeing oh, the kids with their little tin hats on and mm-hmm. how Joaquin Phoenix you know, ends up in the closet like watching the TV because their aliens are actually like invading in Brazil, and that's where they're seeing like the first um, pictures of the aliens yep. before they come to their house and, you know... It, Shyamalan's in it like he is in all of his and he's got all his characters who come and go lots of other character actors it's it, it's yeah. great fun he ha- we defeat the aliens everybody ends up pretty happy and faith is restored in the end spoiler that's alert right. but you know that's what you're gonna get from a Shyamalan movie yeah. Shyamalan has a way of act- he he I think he's very popular within the acting circles. I think yeah. that mm-hmm, he, ha- he has the ability to land great actors, uh, and and sometimes they aren't put to good use. But it doesn't. He stop works them. well with yeah. kids. The, all yeah. the kids in his film are always fantastic, yeah. and Rory Culkin and Abigail Breslin are no yes. uh, 
exception well, to they that t- rule. They turned they out to be good wonderful. actors also yeah. Yeah. Down, down the road. I yeah. mean, this was a this it your movie benefits from having someone like Joaquin Phoenix in there and Abigail Breslin. I mean, I think the, oh right, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're for just, sure. They and are, at the time, Mel Gibson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. Certainly, Mel Gibson. I mean, he's still a great he's, actor. Whether he's or not just a, he's, he's a, a nutbag, but he's a, he's a great, yeah. he's still a great actor. No, I think I think I think I I was going to really say Liz. Third I think one. yeah. That's right. Yeah. After Unbreakable, Six Sense, Unbreakable, then Signs, and yeah, then yeah. The Village came out. So and then and then and then The Village was a was a bad yeah kind of went yeah. like <laughs> eh. yeah, and yeah. then he He's, struck out a couple more times until The Visit came along. Yeah, yeah, like four or five times. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. but still, it was no uh, Signs is a great. It's one of the you know truly a, a UFO horror movie, and actually yeah. you were making mention of whether it's a. A global thing or a local thing? Right. This one is both. It's both. Yeah, yep. I know. That's that's a, you you got. That's exactly why I brought that up. Yeah. I Perfect. was I was think, I, I was film. thinking that exact thing. No, on uh, back to the, the 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 issue of the acting. I thought Abigail Breslin and uh, Roy Culkin were really the ones that saved the film because I thought Mel Gibson's performance was pretty shoddy and incredibly flat. And I don't know mm-hmm. if that was done deliberately, like because all of right. his lines are delivered in a really choppy flat, non-emotional way, as are Joaquin Phoenix's lines. And I was like, are they doing this on purpose? Is there like, is there, is he, is he like, is he doing this for a design reason? Because the kids weren't, the kids were acting with actual emotion and there was a range, Mm -hmm. there was highs and lows, but Mel Gibson plays this incredibly flat character the entire film. I I think that's probably on purpose or, you know, because of you know he's supposed to be like I have no faith in the world anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've lost I mean, my wife. Nothing means anything. Right. The only point at which he shows any degree of emotion is when he confronts uh, the fella, the M Night Shyamalan character yeah. who killed his wife. That's the only point where he shows any emotion, and even then, it's just a slight facial grimace mm-hmm. where you can tell he's right. like almost about to cry, right. but he doesn't quite cry. Yeah. And right. And I think. I think the 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 Joaquin Phoenix character is in shock, possibly, you know, or, mm. or, or something, or he's well, or or as as Liz was describing, he's he's searching for things, he's wanting he's wanting yeah he's wanting to find solace, and he's 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 kind of checked out, right? Yeah, it's like the, but the kids, yeah, but the kids are seeing things for what it is. <laughs> I, I just right, I, the, right. The, 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 that that was the only thing that kind of that, that kind of um, struck me was that if there was indeed. Aliens that were landing on the planet and in potentially in your backyard, you wouldn't have such a calm demeanor. You would be screaming and hollering, yeah. and there would be a whole hell of a lot more curse words thrown around. Right. I'd say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd yeah. say. <laughs> All right, Mike, what's your two? All right, my number two is also a film you guys have never seen or heard of. <laughs> uh, and this is a film that, interestingly, almost predated – it's a it's a found footage movie that predated uh, the Blair Witch Project by 10 years Ten, mm-hmm. yes, ten years. This is a uh, this is a, a, a film um, ca- uh, called UFO Abduction, also known as the Miss McPherson tape. This is a 1989 American found footage film. This was a no budget film, not a low budget film. This was a no budget film. This was produced uh, with sixty five hundred dollars. Oh wow. I, I, wow. I tried I tried to go as low as I thought it could was yeah, possible. Sixty five hundred dollars. Uh it was done by a guy named uh Dean Aliato and essentially his friends. Um but the film centers around a family who are terrorized by legitimate uh, extraterrestrials during a birthday celebration. Um, it does, it does a great thing, you know, at the, at the very, in, at the very front end of the film, I mean, much like Blair Witch, much like Texas Chainsaw, it purports that, uh, the, the film is a legitimate explanation of UFOs. And this is one of the strongest pieces of evidence based on a true story. Yes. You will ever mm. see for, uh, uh, the idea that there is indeed extraterrestrial life. Uh, this involves the, the van, the van Hess family that gathers, uh, together in the Connecticut mountains to celebrate the birthday of five-year-old Michelle. So the whole family and the entire cast is Ma Van Hess and her three sons, Eric, Jason, Michael, Eric's wife, Jamie, the daughter, Michelle, whose birthday they're celebrating, and Jason's friend, Renee. Uh, Michael, one of the sons, is using a handheld camera to record the 
uh, night's events. Um, much, much, much to the chagrin of everybody who keeps saying, why don't you turn that goddamn thing off? Why don't you, you know, like, why are you recording everything? This is so annoying. But in, in kind of a strange way, it sort of makes sense because, you know, the film was obviously, uh, the film was done in 1989, but it was allegedly from events that happened in 1983. And so I kept thinking, well, the technology is so new that, you know, you might be, you might have somebody that would be that self-obsessed to say, mm-hmm. oh, no, no, I I, I, I got to record stuff. I got to, right. I, I, I have to make sure that every single moment of the birthday party is, mm-hmm. is, is recorded. True. Actually, that you know, as, as a lot, like, why would someone have a camera at the ready? It's a mm-hmm. birthday party, right? right. I mean, like, exactly. As opposed exactly. to like, you know, you you keep on thinking of uh, the opportunities of, like, oh, I could have gotten a great picture, right? You know, for for whatever reason, even if you're just holding onto your phone, right? You have to have it at, you know, to, right. to, to shoot it as it as it happens. Yeah. So the 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 film. The, 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 what really sells the film, much like again, much like the Blair Witch, is sort of the naturalistic quality of all the interchanges between the people. It's clear these people knew each other ahead of time, but it's it, it, what's amazing is the dialogue is is not stiff. It's it's almost it almost feels like improvisational in a lot of ways. Pro- well, I, I'm I'm sure it probably I'm sure was. I'm sure some of it probably mm-hmm. was Im- improvisational, but um, even you know even to the point where they encounter the space aliens, the space aliens come into the ha- come into the house. Spoiler alert! Uh, spoiler alert! Part two. These are not nice space <laughs> aliens. Mm-hmm. They are indeed the family is indeed uh, under siege, and they are. I mean. Quite the opposite of what I just described with the Hess family, not the Van Hess family. The Hess family in Signals, the Mel Gibson, mm-hmm. who played everything really flat and stayed. Mm-hmm. These people are panicked and screaming mm-hmm. and swearing, and you really do. You're drawn in to their panic, mm-hmm. uh, and it's it's a it's a really great film. I. I, I highly recommend it. And uh, you can get good. this. You can get you can actually you can, uh you can get the McPherson tape is streaming on Shutter right now. So okay. you can you can definitely oh, see it on yes. Shutter. You can actually it's actually see a, it. it's a really <laughs> clean copy because it's you know it's all shot on VHS. Uh you can also see they just put out, I think a couple years ago, they put out a Blu-ray version of it, which looks looks pretty solid. I mean it looks really good. Uh so you can get physical media, you can stream it on on Shutter. Uh and I think it I think there, you know, there's obviously old copies kicking around. There might be a copy kicking around on YouTube. Well, yeah, also. but it, but if there's a good copy on Shutter, go to Shutter. Yeah, 100. Yeah, right. yeah, or go to your local video store and pick up the Blu-ray copy of 1989's The McPherson Tape. All right. Hmm, so good. my number two yes. is one that the three of us sat down together to watch. Oh, I know this film. Yeah. And uh-huh. uh, me too. This we saw this at. Uh, Overlook yeah. in New Orleans. Hell yeah. Uh, 2019. Yep. Yes. This is The Vast of Night, directed by Andrew Patterson, starring Sierra McCormick and Jake Horowitz. Yep. And sometimes to craft a spooky story, you need to, you can treat even a UFO story like a ghost story. And you need uh, you can use a narrative to paint all the ideas in the minds of the audience. And The Vast of Night did this really, really well. Uh, mm-hmm. That this was, uh, it, it is a, it's exposition heavy, but f- with a purpose, right? It, yeah. It's, it, um, it doesn't feel yeah. like it's not, it's not trying to drop uh, information on you so much as it's trying to tell you stories. Right. Like around a campfire in a way. Right. Um, and, you know, I think this was, the, the 2019 Overlook Festival was a pretty loaded lineup and we thought this was one of the best offerings they had. It won. I think it yeah. won the audience. It, it won the audience yeah. choice award. Right. And yeah. and and we I think we liked the lodge also, but this yeah. one uh, the vast of night was right up there. I think that the hard thing for us was it's like, well, is it Not horror? horror? Yeah. Right. Um but in this context, I'm counting it. Oh, I I, th- I think yeah. so. I think so. Yeah. And uh what we what we what you get is you have two teenagers in the fictional small town of Cayuga, New Mexico, aka so, Roswell, uh, aka <laughs> Roswell, right? But this is a nod and to Rod like Serling's 50s, production right? company. Mm-hmm. So you know, Twilight Zone, Cayuga, yep. yeah. Uh, so Everett, uh, played by Jake Horowitz, is a DJ for the local radio station in an era where that was where you got all your news and entertainment, right? And young Fay is uh, Sierra McCormick is the switchboard operator in town. And both are important jobs being held by down by youngsters. 
Um, mm-hmm. Faye starts getting calls to her switchboard about strange weather phenomena, and it's accompanied by a strange sound. When she hears the same strange audio signal pig- piggybacked onto the radio broadcast, she brings it to Everett's attention, and so they make an announcement on the air uh, to anyone who's listening so th- to comment. And what they get in return are wild stories of alien abductions uh, that who are victimizing the vulnerable and the isolated within their community. And uh, the, 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 what you get is these long, drawn, drawn out um, two, right? Two, two of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, they're almost like, is a, they're almost a like monologues. They are monologues. Yeah. And they will hold, they actually yeah. had one time where they, they let the camera sit for nine minutes on them as was they listened to it. Was it the African-American gentleman? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, it was the, he was the soldier. Right. For, yeah, former military. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, but they, but the, the, the thing that he brought up was that the aliens knew to pick on him and, and, um, and Latinos and other people who were vulnerable, who people would just sort of write off and not care about. Right. And then they also talked to an old woman. Um, right. They go to her house mm-hmm. and they interview her. Um, so there's, again... Very much told through narrative, building up a lot of tension through the storytelling, and it's right. very quiet. I think um, there is something say, say for the opening ten minutes, which, which is, is manic, which is is manic right. and, yeah. cha- and chattery. Yeah. yeah, and and so that, but this is, I think, like when you talk about the opening, there's something very Orson Welles about this yeah. this guy yeah. Patterson, and and uh, he's not a young. He's not. He, this is his first. Big movie, but he's not a young man. Right. Um, he apparently uh, Patterson is a cinematographer who who is in love with the work of Roger Deakins. Yeah, the greatest. Yeah, one of the greatest cinematographers of all time. Yeah, he runs a podcast called uh, uh, Team Deakins. Okay, and and so that's where you could. And but you look at the rest of his his filmography. He's got nothing else. He's not doesn't done, has done short films. He hasn't done. That's fascinating. Ad, no this advertising. Is this is this is it. And and it's like holy shit. This guy did this in his first first attempt. Yeah, but his yeah his chop show yeah. man. Yeah, and because yeah. uh, of this, what Mike was describing is this beautiful long tracking shot of right. of Everett going through the high school basketball him, the gym. High school gym. Yep. Yeah. And and they sort of, they're walking through, and you can see the, the the kids are playing ball, and the crowd's going crazy, and then they they go into the back room because they're they're checking out some some audio equipment um, and just as a way to introduce him. But it is, it reminds me of a uh, touch of evil. Yeah. The, the, for the sure. Great, the great opening mm-hmm. sequence. Yeah. 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 Uh, or, Orson Welles thing. And, and this was ironic. I didn't really realize, well, I guess it becomes obvious, but the call signs for the radio station is W O T W. Right, 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 right. Also war of the worlds. Right. Right, ah. the OG of alien invasion fiction yes. from H.G. Yeah. Wells and Orson Welles. So you you said you said Touch of Evil in my review on scariestthings.com one T of this film. I said the opening scene was somewhat somewhat reminiscent of Richard Linklater's decidedly non horror film Dazed and Confused. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a Spielbergian depiction of a small town America that simul- simultaneously portrays the excitement of the big game and the myopic universe of individuals within the community. Wow, see that <laughs> that's that's prose from Mr. Campbell. Yep. That's what that is. But no, it, it is it is uh, it, this movie is actually getting it's gotten a lot of uh, push from Shudder. Um, they know what they have. They've they've gotten it, it and Amazon up. bought it too because yeah. for a long time it was streaming for yeah, free on it Amazon. Was on Prime. Uh, Amazon Prime. Yeah, I, yeah. That's maybe that's where I'm seeing it because I, I had both sort sure, of sure. pop up on my uh, on on my streaming um, banners. But uh, this is a really really well crafted movie uh, that there is there are sinister uh, aliens involved here. Yep. Um, there's almost it's almost kind of like you didn't want to see it necessarily because yep. the story is so good. I think that was that was if there was any little flaw that we we saw that we thought about right. it was like do you need to show the aliens? Right. There, there there's I I gave it a I gave it a 4 out of 5. Had they not shown the aliens, I would have given it a 5 out of 5. I think it, it the the filmmaking craft the acting, you just fall in love. The characters are so good. Yeah, they really they are. are. So they really are. So I, I, I hope to see. I hope to see more of uh, Faith and, and yeah. Ever. Faye, yes. not yeah. Faith. Uh, Faye. Uh, Faye was in um, VFW. Oh, that's right. Was she? Yep. Yeah, she yeah, was yeah, the girl yeah. in there. You wouldn't recognize that's her. That's oh. right. Because in this one, she plays sort of this like really a, a precocious 
innocent teen. VFW, not so much. Yeah. All right. Liz, passing to you. Okay. I am going to 2013. I'm just going to up the scares a tiny bit from signs. <laughs> this is not a gateway, but it's not extreme. And this is 2013's Dark Skies. Yeah. Um, this is written and directed by Scott Stewart. It is a Blumhouse production okay. that stars Carrie Russell and Josh Hamilton hey. and J.K. Simmons. Hey. <clears throat> and this plays out in the kind of Blumhouse outline that maybe kind of sinister and other things follow because <laughs> we've got the Barrett family, Carrie Rush, Carrie um, Russell is the mom and Daniel Josh Hamilton is the dad. They have two sons, Jesse and Sammy. They live in the suburbs. Daniel's unemployed. So they're kind of having, you know, a tough time together because, uh, Carrie Russell plays Lacey, who's a real estate agent. And, um, the son's, have a walkie talkie and things like that. And they communicate that way. So, you know, you're going to heal aliens through that walkie talkie. (laughs) Um, And then weird stuff start happening during the night. Like, of course, classic aliens, they go into the kitchen, take everything out of the cabinets and rearrange that and stack it up in crazy (laughs) stacks. And the alarms are going off. And, uh, you know, like when the, the alarm company calls, you know, the dad's like, well, what sensor went off? And they're like, all of them. They all are <laughs> off at the same time. All this stuff is happening. And the little kid is, you know, kind of going into trances. And then he has bruises on his body. And people are like, oh, my God, you're being abused at home. But the parents are just frazzled because they don't know what's going on. And so, of course, they've got to get to the Internet and find an expert. That expert is J.K. Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> So much like Vincent D'Onofrio and, uh, you know, walking Ethan Hawke through the history of Bagul in The Sinister, this is exactly how this relationship plays out. He's like, oh, well, there's these missing children and there have been UFO sightings and there's been alien abductions and all that stuff. And then. But nobody believes me. But no right. one believes you. Yeah, you're going to start seeing the greys. So these are your classic gray aliens who, uh, for some reason, have their eye on one of these kids and are going to kind of stop at nothing to get them. You don't know why. You don't know what they want with them. But you may find out that this has been going on for longer than the family thought. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a straightforward, classic Alien abduction movie. Uh, does, there the house, is does the house shake in here? And 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 and, Heck yeah, and, it does. and you get the I mean, blinding lights coming into the blind oh, yeah. shakes, and you have the blinding lights and all the sounds. But when they show it from the outside, you know nothing's going on and it's completely silent. It's right. just what the people inside are experiencing. So, yeah, this is nothing new, uh, but it's good. It's well done. The acting is really good, and it was kind of at the beginning of those Bloom house, uh, things of, you know, Jason Bloom's going to throw a million bucks at it and yep. just see what sticks. And this one stuck and it's quick. It's 97 minutes long and worth a watch. If you, I think, I think it totally to is. I think it's got like, yeah, complete it. If you, if you want sort of secret kind of covert aliens mm-hmm. who aren't yeah. ob- obnoxious and loud and, and uh, you know, uh, shooting planes out of the sky, then and they, drinking and causing a ruckus and causing a ruckus. Yeah, yeah these, these are more like <laughs> these are more like prank filled prank filled aliens. Yeah, I yeah. I, I, I like yeah. this film. I saw you know this this, this again was another film uh, that a friend of the podcast Matt Howell was talking about. And uh, two shout outs for Matt. I know That's two right. shout outs. Matt, Matt likes his shout outs. I know we haven't had a Matt Howell shout out forever. But yeah, this was one that he had he had been talking about some time ago too, and I uh, sat down and watched it. And I really liked it. I was it holds up. It it's, does. It it's really timeless. It really does. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, obviously, it's uh, wh- when did it come out again? Um, two thousand thirteen. Two thousand thirteen. So, yep. I mean, there's going to be things, you know, cell phones and things right. like that, but like the story isn't you know tied to the age. It's, it's right. a classic alien abduction story. It really is. Yep. I totally agree. I totally agree. And you can see it on Netflix and all that kind of stuff. So yep. it's available. Easy, easy. Exactly. exactly. Easy to get to. Yep. 
All right. All right. My Mike, last, what's my your last, final one? My final film of the uh, night is a 2014 American found footage science fiction horror film directed by, it was the debut directorial effort by Maddie Beckerman. This is Alien Abduction, also known as The Morris Family Abduction. This came out 2014 on VOD. It also had apparently a limited theatrical run uh, that didn't quite do very well. But this involves... Uh, the uh, the Brown Mountain, uh, North Carolina, which uh, allegedly is the site of many, many uh, strange happenings. Mm. Um, and they even at the beginning of the film did sort of, a, again, a fake conceit using Project Blue Book, which, of course, is the famed uh, the famed uh, U.S. Air Force investiga- investigation into uh, space aliens. And they even used a fake conceit about uh, the U.S. Air Force investigating Brown Mountain, North Carolina. This involves a family out uh, for a camping trip in North Carolina. The young boy, uh, uh, there's a young boy, a young autistic boy, an 11 year old who records everything. My much again, you have to, you have to create right. a device, you have to create a mechanism for why a young boy would be so self obsessed to be recording everything. Mm-hmm. In this case, it's uh, it is his coping me- mechanism as an autistic child. Okay. So he's not going to turn off the camera for nothing. Uh, on the last night uh, of the camping trip, uh, they they're startled by flashes outside their tent. They go outside to look. They see these weird uh, three distinct star-like so- uh, objects in the sky uh, that maneuver around very quickly and then disappear. The next morning, they get up to take a drive. Their GPS goes out. They have no cell service. They run out of gas. And then in a nod to birds, which apparently the director said was a direct nod to birds, all these crows start falling from the sky. And there are crows littered all over the roadway. What do they got against crows? I know. Anyway, <laughs> um, eventually the you know the family is forced to deal with this. Some of the family members do deal with it. Some of the family members do not uh, deal with it. Uh, There are a couple shots in the film that I'm sure you've seen. If you haven't seen, if you saw them, you would say, I've seen that shot. They're pretty cool uh, where it's like the back breaking over uh, the the body sort of snapping over backwards and getting sucked up into the sky. The thing, the thing that I really, really liked about the film and it's not so much a spoiler alert as as it is sort of the, the, the epilogue to the film is um, Project Blue Book going through the found footage, right? Like looking mm-hmm. at the young mm-hmm. boys found footage. And there is an absolutely wonderful shot that, of course, is, you know, fuzzy and scratchy and everything else. But it essentially involves one, the, the camera sort of going from Brown Mountain, North Carolina into outer space. Oh. <laughs> in, into nice. like getting sucked up into the the UFO. And oh, I was nice. like, well, this is this is sort of the ultimate in UFO. Yeah. Like sure. mm-hmm. it, you see the UFO and then they show the UFO and you experience the UFO. And I'm like, this has got to go on my top three list for the best UFO films of all time. Yeah. Um, you know, I will say this, it does not have a, uh, there was a lot of criticism around the film because uh, the plot line is pretty generic. It's, it's, it's a little flat and there's, a, there's a, an excessive use, which Eric, you'll hate this. There's an excessive use of jump scares. Um, uh. I was super, <laughs> but it worked on me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I got scared a plenty. Uh, it is, I, I like it. And I mean, if you're after a UFO horror film, um, this is actually a lot of the films we've talked to, I've talked about at least aren't necessarily like horror films as much as they are just tense, uh, science fiction films. This is truly a UFO horror film. And these, you, the, or these space aliens that come out of the UFOs are nasty. All right. Yeah. Cool. Alien abduction 2014. All right. So for my number one, yes. Uh, and as Mike likes to often say, uh, go to the top of the mountain. Yeah. Uh, I. This is not just you know. The question is like, well, or, is or it in a this horror case, movie? We're going to we're going to go to the mothership. Yeah. This is go the, to the mothership. <laughs> going to the mothership with uh, George Clinton. Um, uh, this is uh, the you know when you when you ask, is it a horror movie? Yes, absolutely, one hundred percent of the horror movie, and it is. I, in my opinion, the best horror movie ever made. 
What? Uh, ah, this is what? the 1981 John Carpenter movie, The Thing. Wait. Okay. What is this movie? I've never heard of this. Yes. <laughs> what? It's like, what? It's like, what? You thought I was going to name something else? It's the greatest horror movie of all time, and it just so happens to be a UFO movie. I got to see this. In fact, it I opens with a UFO crashing yeah. into Antarctica. Put this on my list. Right. <laughs> so many people will say that the, op- the movie opens with a Siberian husky in the snow, but no, it opens with a crashing flying saucer. And and for those for those of you out there who are listening and and because this is not a video podcast, I am sitting about two and a half feet from a massive thing poster <laughs> <laughs> in, in chibi form. It's like <laughs> right. with, with little little yeah uh, that I got from Mondo. I love that movie. Um, so the the unfortunate Antarctica research team of U.S. Outpost Thirty One. Later finds out that this down spacecraft. Later finds the down spacecraft, but the alien has already found them by way of the aforementioned innocent-looking dog racing through the snow. The men go out uh, on a trail of clues that leads them to the down ship. They also find a chunk of ice uh, removed from the glacier surrounding the crash. They don't know it, but doom is upon them, and the rest is film history. Forget little green men from Mars or Greys. The aliens look like Wilford Brimley. Until they don't. (laughs) And when the thing is cornered, it reveals itself in the most spectacular way possible. Anybody who knows horror knows this movie, and those who don't need to get online and watch this movie as soon as the podcast is over. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yes, Uh, yes, and yes. So don't know. Like I, You you have to believe this is kind of like everybody in this... Listening to this podcast has seen Halloween or sure. Alien. Right, right, right. Like, this right. Is, it is one of those great touchstone movies. But it is surprising, actually, that some folks just they, – they, 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 it's old enough now that some younger viewers may not be as aware of it. And it is like, go you, – you, right. you, you do not do better science fiction horror than The Thing. Right. Um, now, that, where are you with the second – with the, the remake or the – I thought it was all right. I thought it was awesome. I and, thought, and I'll yeah, tell you, I thought it was I'll, good. I'll tell you this. Uh, Matt Howell, shout out three uh, for this <laughs> podcast. He said, you know what you got to do? You got to watch the original thing and then immediately follow it up by watching the sort of the faux remake. Yeah. And he said, it will absolutely blow your mind. Yeah. You have to watch them together so, you, at the same time. Yeah. And it... It is so seamless and so fascinating the you, way that they work everything together. You I was almost just, need to invert it. You, you kind of yeah. need to see the the, the, the prequel. Oh, that's then, what I meant. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you, yeah. You, watch yeah. The, you watch what happens to the Norwegians yeah. first, and yeah. then you see what happens. Exactly. The, the, yeah. the surprise element comes. I mean, that the, the difficulty with the the, the 2011 version is that um, you know that how how do you repackage this in a way that's that's still surprising? And they did they did the 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 fillings inspection rather than the blood sample test. Right, right. Which was, I thought, very clever. Oh, I thought, I thought that was super cool, and yeah. And, you know, they had they had some, uh, uh, a good cast. They they had, um, yeah, I, I it, it looked great. I think that some of the CGI, they, they should have gone, they, the, they actually did a uh, full-on, a physical rig for for the for the stuff they didn't use it and the and the guys who who amalgamated dynamics i think is the name of the the special effects team they mm-hmm. were so frustrated because they said you could have and you look at it and you're like holy moly it looks yeah. like rob botine part two right 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 right. they actually took that and they did a movie called harbinger down which they said see this is what it could have been like okay okay um, mm. uh but, but you know when when people were bagging on it, it's like when it when it came out, I was like, I, I actually stayed away because yeah. people were bagging on it so much, and I was I, like, well, well, geez, maybe it is that bad. But then when I finally sat down and watched the two together, I was like, no, it's it's it, a really decent film, and it's yeah. it's really good. I mean, the, my only complaint about it was it didn't really take it anywhere no. new. It, it was it, essentially the retelling of it, the same story. It's full of Easter eggs in a way that, yeah. but it, but it actually tells you what happened to the it. It's if you made it into one big movie, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I kind of would. Which what they which they kind of did, yeah. sort of. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, John W. Campbell, no relation to Mike, came <laughs> up with this story of the aliens amongst us. Uh, and so when we talk about, you know, you know the the fear of others, right? You know, and and this was he wrote this in 1938, uh, and the thing was easily a stand-in for fear of your neighbors. Are they communists, Nazis, right. French? Whatever you know, when your spouse is acting a little different, she's an alien. When you're the odd mm-hmm. coworker of yours who just seems a bit off, he's an alien. You know, this trope is used so well. This was the same thing. So, um, the invasion of the body snatchers took this clue, right? right? And then, 
you know, they, they've tried it again with movies like Species and The Hidden and Under the Skin and The Faculty and They Live, which are all pretty good movies, but it is at the apex with The Thing. And it's, oh, yeah, yeah, I think for this sure. Is, uh, paranoia plus body horror. You got yep. it. I'll have to see this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's a little, little movie. <laughs> Liz, you're number one. Okay, my number one is a short little film, and it is Slumber Party Alien Abduction, which is a part of VHS 2, directed okay. by uh, Jason Eisner, who also did a favorite little short, Treevenge. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Okay, you got my interest. Yeah, okay. So this is the part that comes after Safe Haven. So <laughs> people are like, I don't remember this one. Yeah. Okay, so this is about two kind of preteen brothers, Gary and Randy. They've got a camera on their dog, the Yorkshire Terrier named Tank, and they're making videos at their lake house. Their parents have gone out of town, so it's these two kids and their older sister, who's probably like a senior in high school. So the second the parents pull out the sister's boyfriend and all her friends show up they've got beer they've got weed they're ready to get high and go (laughs) swimming in this lake and the little boys are ready to just spy on them and you know try to ruin their night so the teen the older teenagers are hanging out at the lake the little boys are swimming in there filling up water guns and oh what's out of the corner of your eye there's like a alien in the water a gray so these are not like the uh signs aliens these ones can go in water you don't really know it's just kind of like floating there and very weird so later that night um loud music starts blaring lights start flashing and like this crazy noise is heard um but the older teens think it's the younger brothers just uh screwing with them and so they're all i don't know One's trying to take a picture of the sister and the boyfriend having sex. So they like the other guy goes and he's like embarrassing these little kids until all of a sudden, like the house starts to shake lights come in and they all go running outside and there is an alien invasion. So there is the one from earlier who came out of the water and then all his little buddies came probably in their UFO and this is where it shit hits the fan. And this one gets bloody Super violent, and all these kids are getting abducted. Yeah, yeah, this one's got some jump scares, uh, a lot of blood, a lot of guts, and it's all, what, in 15 minutes? So I will put a trigger alert for people. The dog (laughs) is in danger in this one. So I don't don't care about the the teenagers, but you got to... Watch out for the dog. So it's uh, c- totally frenetically filmed because it's, you know, VHS. So it's found footage and real shaky cam because half the time the camera's on a dog. The other half, it's just teenagers running around holding it, not even like up to their eye, just like in their hands running with the camera for the lights. So Slumber Party Alien Abduction, get yourself into VHS 2. Watch wow. Safe Haven and stick around for this one. Right. Yeah, you know, I forgot he did that one. I yeah, I, to- I, I totally forgot that. I Treevenge. VHS, no, I remember Treevenge. I, for- I, no, I, know, I, I forgot I that it was part of VHS, no, too. I, I, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just remarking that it's like that this this guy knows how to do some He fun. knows how to do a short film yeah. because yeah. his other, his full-length film, he did Hobo with a Shotgun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, which I thought, was, with, I thought was pretty solid. It, it, I yeah, like Trouble with bad. a Shotgun with Rucker Howard. Right. It is. It is. Yeah. It is definitely a, a grindhouse throwback kind of a thing. Yeah. And uh, and it started the Mondo poster craze. So yes. hey, good on him. And I did. I he did, did that, and he did uh, VH, uh, ABCs of Death segment too. He yep. did Y. Yep. For Young Buck. No, I don't I d- know if I got all the way to the end of the alphabet in that. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely <laughs> don't watch. think I did. Yeah. <laughs> but I did give Treevenge. Five out of five on the Scariest yeah. Things uh, I website. Yeah. That's one of my favorite yep. shorts. And my review is up there yeah. on scariestthings.com. So a, 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 a couple of honorable mentions that I just wanted to throw out there. there was, of course. There, there was one called Extra, the uh, Extra Terrestrial, which um, was done uh, 2015 and um, stars one of uh, my favorite sort of hor- uh, horror movie, forgotten horror movie actresses, is Brittany Murphy, who, who was in... Mm, um, yeah. Uh, the 
uh, what what uh, what stains the sands red? Oh, sure. Um, and uh, and, and you know, there, there's that's, but it's a really really traditional kind of group of young twenty somethings go out to a cabin in the woods. It and, and then the aliens come down and you mm-hmm. know, nab them. Yeah, and it's like super super simple. And then uh, I have a lot of respect for Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. No, oh, I oh I, I love it. The I Tom think Cruise I, one. Yeah, that's a. Yeah. You know, those were some. It was like I thought that's when when Spielberg wants to turn on, turn on the uh, the the his darker side. I think you know, and Tom Cruise was great in it. I, he played yeah, a yeah. he played kind of a dick, yeah. which is like yep. <laughs> which is always fun seeing Tom Cruise playing a dick. I liked yeah. I liked seventy five percent of the War of the Worlds. Yeah, the, I think the I was, last the last quarter was like the first. The first seventy five percent was an A. The last quarter was an F. Oh really? And so you did, I, so. I left the theater just pissed. Oh like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but but you know how it was going to. I mean, it's a, it follows the H. G. Wells know, things. Like it was, they caught the flu. Right. Yeah. And I say attack the block. I didn't talk about it because oh, we've talked yeah. about it so many yeah, yeah, times. Yeah. But yeah. that's probably one of the best alien invasion movies ever. I agree. That mm-hmm. I love attack the block. Yep. For yeah. sure. For okay. Sure. And I did rewatch it, and I was going to pick it, but. So uh, a couple of quick uh, housekeeping things. Yes. Um, one. Gonna be quick. Yeah, gonna be quick. Um, <laughs> I've, I've got. Uh, stay tuned. I've got. I've been working on something that's like completely out of left field here, uh, but I've uh, uh, compiled a massive list of horror musicals. Hell yeah! It's, so yep. if you want to find the weird unicorn in all of filmdom, the horror musical is one of the strangest ones, and I think I found. Like ninety percent of them. There's there may be a couple of stray dogs loose, but they're not worthy of inclusion at this point. I got um, a sneak peek of this list, and it is massive. And so, Eric's write up <laughs> is massive. So, so if you yeah. want to yep. jump into this, man, you're, you're be forewarned. You're jumping into the deep end of the deep pool. Deep into the pool. <laughs> and uh, but there are some there are some really good ones. We've talked about. I think seven of them have been have made our yeah. podcast uh, uh, episodes yeah. at, at some point. So, anyways, uh, is keep there your eyes is open there a that. UFO horror musical? I, you know what? Um, <laughs> I almost put Cosmic Dawn in there because yeah, the, yeah. Cause they, they actually, when they start doing, oh, yeah, that's right. you they, said they do the Class 2 song, yeah. but they, was, they, only, they only do one. Oh, okay. One song. And it's like, you can't, you're not a musical if you just do one song. True. Um, True. So, uh, no, but there, but there, you'll see a lot of, a lot of favorites in there and a lot of obscure stuff and a lot of just, some of the weirdest movies in all of filmdom are horror movie, m- movie horror musicals. Yeah, so oh, for sure. Stay for tuned sure. for that. And then um, another sort of a small pitch here for, it's been a long time, it's been about a year since we've actually made a pitch for the, for uh, our Patreon page, but, uh, you know, at, at the end of the year, we our, our, our bills come due and it's like, That's hey, right. anybody want to... You know, throw a couple bucks our way. We're really like MP- we're like NPR. We don't bug you that often, yeah. but we do right. bug you once a year. So this yeah. is so we're not going to give you a tote bag. It's that right. time of year. You're not getting a tote bag. <laughs> you might get some cool buttons and some stickers. Yeah, the buttons yeah, and stickers, yeah. and also, well, and if you give us enough, we'll give you a T-shirt. Hell yeah! So yep. that so that is a very NPR kind of a thing. Yeah, and then you'll also get to uh, uh, select a topic is one thing, and then you will also mm-hmm. become part of our. Horror uh, juries. Whenever we do things like next year, uh, big big thing coming up next year is we're going to revisit our top 100 list. Hell yeah! And if you would like to be one of Hell the voters yeah. for the top 100 list, get yourself on the Patreon list, and uh, you can you too can can have some influence because we are are actually we know that there are more of you out there because our we we can see the growth on our uh, on our our data, but our Patreon page doesn't reflect it. <laughs> for all of you, for all of our friends who do contribute to our Patreon page, we we love thank you. you. Thank, thank, you. thank, thank you, you so much, uh, and uh, we hope to keep on bringing this to you for many, many years to come. All right, let's yep. recap really fast with our best UFO horror movies of all time. Liz, what do you got? I had 2002's M Night Shyamalan movie Signs. I had 2013's Dark Skies, directed by Scott Stewart, and Slumber Party Alien Abduction, which is a piece of VHS2 from 2013, uh, directed by Jason Eisner. All right. Okay. I had uh, Cosmic Dawn, uh, which is technically a 2022 movie, but uh, <laughs> so it'll be coming out <laughs> next year, um, but I got to see it on the festival circuit. Uh I also have 2019's The Vast of Night, 
uh, by Andrew Patterson, which you can catch right now streaming on Amazon Prime. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I have uh, a little movie called The Thing from John Carpenter, 1981. I still got to see that. That sounds so interesting. Yep. Yeah, it's a little, little, really little, little indie <laughs> underground uh, shaky cam movie. Yeah. Yes. Might, might All right. Enjoy that. I had uh, 1975's uh, made-for-TV biographical film, The UFO Instance, Incident starring James Earl Jones, uh, the 1989 found footage film, The McPherson Tape, also known as The UFO Abduction, and then finally, uh, the 2014 found footage science fiction horror film, Alien Abduction, also known as The Morris Family Abduction. Liz, you said you have a tagline to get I us do. out of here tonight. I do. This is the tagline from Dark Skies, and it is, once you've been chosen, you belong to them. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you folk going to get you. 